Hi everyone, welcome back to Crownstang VoiceOver. My name is Neil Glasgow. In today's VoiceOver Tips video, I'm going to be going over ACX and really, is it something that you should be involved with? Now, I'm going to go over ACX from a narrator's point of view, not from an author's point of view. There are issues around uh, authors and ACX and how things work on there. But I would invite you to go and do some of the research there. Um, this video is only going to be focused on the narrators and if it's something that us as voiceover artists should be involved in. So with that in mind, let's get into it. So for those who don't know, ACX is Audible's platform, Audible owned by Amazon. It's their platform for narrators, authors and production houses essentially to get together, collaborate and produce an audiobook. And when it comes to this, one of the things that you as the voiceover artist really need to be conscious of is these tend to not be the random house publishing houses or um, Penguin Audio or something along those lines. These are smaller publishing houses or self published authors um, and that's where quite a lot of the work can come in now you as the voiceover artist have got a couple of options here you can work with the production houses uh, and or the authors and you could get paid on a per finished hour rate um, and per finished hour is essentially if you if the book is five hours long and you charge a hundred dollars per hour you're going to make $500 and you get paid that directly from the the author or the publishing house. So ACX just isn't involved in that. If you get uh, paid on a royalty share scheme, essentially as, uh, as they call it, it's um, you get a proportion of the, the book sales. Now, Amazon take or Audible, ACX, take the lion's share of that and then the author gets the next largest share and you as the narrator gets the lowest share. Now, what you need to be aware of and think about when you're getting involved with these books is A, how long is the book? So say it's a, a, a 10 hour novel, like a Game of Thrones with lots and lots of characters and it's really going to test your acting ability. Great, that's the kind of thing that you want to be involved in. However, say it's a 10 hour book that's got twists and turns and characters and all that sort of stuff, you're going to need to spend 10 hours reading it. You need to read it to understand how to play all the characters and who lives, who dies, who sleeps with who. It's, you know, you need to understand all that. So that's 10 hours. You've then got no less than 10 hours to record the thing. The reality is you're probably going to spend 12, 15, 20 hours recording the thing. Depends on how you record, how you edit mistakes, all that sort of stuff. So we're at 20 hours, let's call it. Then you've got to do all your other bits and publish it. So you might be pushing 25 hours, maybe even 30 hours. And that's all time that you're not recording anything else. Now, you don't have to do this in one or two days. Some books give you five weeks, some books give you months. Um, but you just need to be aware of how much time you're spending on it. Which brings me to my next point, the type of book that you get involved in. Now, again, let's just stay with this epic novel with lots of characters. If you look on Amazon and see that this book's been out for a year, six months, ten years, doesn't matter, you can see where it is in the, the hierarchy. Now, it might be in the first hundred thousand. Uh, not bad, actually. It might be in the first three hundred thousand. Okay. Maybe in the first three million. Now we're getting into problems here. And when you start getting into its three millionth in a list and it's got five stars but only one review, are you confident enough in doing that and spending all that time that you're not doing anything else on that book? Something you really do need to think about. And on the flip side, you, you, you go, okay, well shall I just do the short three-hour books? Same issue from a different direction. Yes, they're shorter books, and they may be learning books, they may be marketing books, corporate books, whatever. But they're shorter books, 
and you might think to yourself, well, I'll just practice on these or I'll use it as training. Again, it's time that you're not spending doing something else. And again, doing all the right checks to make sure that the book is selling, whether it's an hour long or 10 hours long, is the book selling? Now, the flip side is, or rather, another issue along this line is the book might not even be released yet. And I have, in the past, been involved in those books. Now, I've read for those books because ultimately, I think the person that I'm reading for and the book itself will sell. I was confident in that and and I decided to go ahead with it and it all worked out fine. But again, the ownership, and, and I'm, I'm putting the ownership on you, you really do need to do your due diligence to make sure that it's worth your time. So that's the time factor I wanted to, to talk about. The next element is the pay element. Now, this is not for a, a per finished hour. You get paid that. And whatever it is that you negotiate, that's what you're going to get paid. I'm talking specifically about the royalty share program. Now, I think uh, ACX takes 50%. And then with the other 50%, that gets split 60-40, rather, between um, you and the author. The author rightly gets the lion's share. Now, if the book is selling, then I think it's over a 30-day period, Amazon will say this many books sold, and then 30 days after that, you should get a check or, or something in your bank account. And this is where it falls down a little bit. Amazon will show you where the book is selling, but it's not a, a, a live feed, so to speak. It's not a blow-by-blow blow every time that sells. So you don't really get a, a view of where the book is, how it's doing, and because there's a 30, 60, 90 day gap with a lot of these things, I'm doing hand movements under the camera, there's a lot of gap there and you don't have a massive amount of control. So people go weeks, months, longer and don't see a penny. And that is not just for you as the narrator, that happens on the author side as well. It happens, it's not the way that it works. It can happen. And these tend to come out with these smaller books and some of the well less known books. There's a lot of books on ACX that are self-published by the author, um, which means that they haven't gone through a publishing house, they haven't gone through some of the quality standards that are out there. Those are books that, personally, myself, I would be hesitant to get involved with. Um, you can make some money on that. I'm, I'm not trying to say that people can't. I'm just giving you that these are the things that you should really know before starting on ACX. Know how long your book's going to be, know how you're going to get paid, and also be fully, I suppose, conscious of how long it might take to get paid. ACX is... Wild West is probably unfair to say, but it's that kind of thing. Because you can self-publish, and ACX don't really do any quality checks on the quality of writing or the quality of the story, the ownership is on you as the narrator to really do, like I say, your due diligence to find out if this is a book that you want to be involved with. And some of us, again, that's that's not just reading the book beforehand. That's, you know, you might be waking up and going, oh, that's spelt wrong. Oh, that sentence doesn't work. Oh, there's a typo there. It's, yeah, you you are putting your name and your time to a book that, again, Amazon hasn't really done much except say, hey, we'll make some money out of this. Again, conscious. So some of the things to just be aware of, and I'm making this sound like ACX is a, is a death sentence for any narrator. It's really not. It's not. You can make money on this. You can get that, oh, I wasn't expecting a check today. Isn't that nice? Look at all that money. It absolutely can happen. But there are so many more things out there that you just need to be aware of to navigate it because the platform itself doesn't protect you. So I would say if you see a book from one of the big publishers and it's a, you know, a well-known author and it, it just looks too good to be true, it probably is. I'd probably avoid those books. I'd probably avoid the books that are poorly written, self-published, um, may have some very controversial elements in that. Again, is this book going to be picked up? Some books like diet books, cookbooks... Things that may go through a fad, again, I'd just be a little bit conscious of those. 
understand where the book might be selling and ultimately what is the book selling for. If it's selling for $2 on Amazon and you're going to take, you know, Amazon's going to take 50% and then you get 40% of whatever's left over, is that worth your time? There's a lot of due diligence you have to do. So just do it. And when in doubt, double check. And like I say, if it seems too good to be true, just walk away from it. There, there's no, you're not under any obligation to do these things. Um, so yeah, is ACX any good? If you do your bits and if you are conscious of all the things that I'm talking about and there's lots and lots more, please do go online and, and find some bits as well and, and look at other people's uh, thoughts and comments on it. ACX is a platform you either get on really well with or you really don't. It can be quite contentious. Um, but there is money to be made there, like I say, if you do your due diligence. I hope this video has been helpful. I hope it doesn't sound all doom and gloom. It's not, but yeah, there are quite a few things that you just need to be aware of. If you found it helpful, give me a like and subscribe. And if you could share it on all the social networks, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, dumb sentence, one per video. Um, it really does help the channel out. And remember, you can absolutely be a voiceover artist. I'll see you in the next video.